Welcome back, everyone. We are here for the Losers Finals here in Amplify. So, World Friend Star is going to be here with us, along with uh, EU, which just beat Requiem there in the Losers Semifinals. So, we do have the starting 12 for this match here, and then for the WF side, it is going to be Flo, Lanfi, Lingos, Swift, Theo, THS, and then for EU... We are going to see the same starting six that we did previously against RE, and that's going to be Bry, Leo, Luisao, Manster, Spike, and Troida. So we we'll hope we did not butcher any of those names. Uh, again, Sketch will be back here momentarily. We're looking forward to getting into the action here. And again, the winner of this match will go up against Prestige, and they will have to beat Prestige twice in order to win Amplify 5. So looking forward to the, the action that we have going in, I'm kind of curious to see out of this group who we're going to be following. And, and we'll probably get confirmation of that momentarily as we get into the game. But looking, looking like this is going to be pretty interesting already because EU, I don't believe yet, has faced Prestige. But obviously World Friend coming off of the, the loss of Prestige here in the winner's finals. So it, it's going to be interesting seeing how whoever wins this is going to stack up here. Again, this is kind of the bronze and silver medal match, or actually the bronze match, I guess you could say. So the winner will go on to have a shot to win in the finals. But again, looking forward to the action that we do have coming up here momentarily. And yes, so we will not be referring to THS as THS. It will be Thomas. Thanks, Royal. So and with that being said, um, looking forward to to getting into the action here. We did get into the start screen here for the war. Looks like we do have all 12 players in. So that is good news. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty excited to see. Uh, I've, I've only warred against these two teams both once uh, in, in action. But again, calling this out is going to be pretty interesting. And then we're going to have tomorrow, Sunday, the winner of this match again, facing off Prestige. And we're likely going to have a new team come in for that. So again, Amplify has been kind of a fun tournament. It's been like two weeks long. And or actually three weeks long for that matter. This is week number three here. So very interesting format. Started with 40 teams. There's about eight or nine teams still playing. And in their respective brackets. And I think with that being said, the prestigious sketch might be back in action. Uh, hello, guys. How's it going? I just got back from a quick uh, quick break, I guess you could call it. Uh, yeah, so what did I miss? I think people are just joining the room. <laughs> yeah, the show must go on. Yeah, they're just joining the room. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, well, we won't talk about what you have, but I am 28th birthday. I'm have been open wound covering Mario Kart. I didn't even know about that. What happened? If you don't so, mind me asking. So long story short, just um, you know, I guess uh, the quick PSA is just just you know be hygienic, protect yourselves. I'm not going to say that I'm not hygienic, but um, because I wash my hands all the time. But what happened was is is on Saturday, like last Saturday, was a very heavy day of Mario Kart. You had Amplify. I have a land tournament. Long story short, somehow I, I think I had a hangnail. It got cut, and then I must have gotten infected. And so the problem is, is that when you have an infection and it's below the surface of your finger, it can't go anywhere. So process of uh, elimination there, the only way it can go somewhere is if you create an opening. Um, and with yeah. that being said, yeah, it's not fun, like draining your thumb. And, and so I have this incision in it and, and I'm a lefty. So, you know, you need your left thumb for Mario Kart unless you play tilt controls. So it's a very frustrating thing for me just because uh, this is my birthday. I was going to go. There was a huge uh, event tonight. Um, and so, yeah, it just kind of derails you a little bit, especially oh. with your schedule of things. But I kind of noticed it. You know, it's funny. I noticed it when I was facing JPP in, uh, in our racket match, and I had to be subbed out immediately in three races. That's how much pain I was in. Yeah, that sucks. I'm really sorry to hear about that, though, especially on yeah. your birthday. Well, it's fine. I mean, it, you know, it's not swelling anymore. The pain's relatively gone. But the thing is, is that now that it is a huge cut and it's open, you can't afford to reinfect it so with that being said just take care of yourself you know but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I, i'm kind of a little bit bummed because there's things going on tonight ninja was in vegas for the uh, mcgregor fight and then with um things going on with genesis and a few other major 
land tournaments. It's it's kind of setting me back. But that being said, though, we are, are heading into our first. Okay. Yeah, very good. Uh, we're starting WF with one, four, uh, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, which is you know pretty decent spots for our DKJ, I guess. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I think the fan favorite. Uh, personally, was is going to be WF just because of their lineup. Uh, I think you saw it earlier, but it was, it was uh, pretty pretty strong actually. But uh, that mean doesn't mean that EU can't give up like a good fight. Uh, they obviously have been performing well in the past uh, with this lineup in particular. They've been really good at getting shocks, which WF is obviously going to have to counter somehow uh, going into this war as well. Uh, but I think we see Spike already dropping back, which he's been doing pretty much every race last war. Uh, I'm not sure how many of the shocks he got, but it seemed to have worked decently, I guess, uh, for the last work in terms of the shocks that you were, EU were able to pull in the end. Yeah, and if uh, EU can time it right, they, they might be in good shape here um, and at least be able to get some of their guys that are mid-pack up into those top spots around WF if they can kind of control and communicate those shocks dodges effectively. For sure. And sorry, I think I missed it, but who watching again? That I do not know. Oh, EU Bry. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can't hear the the man, the myth, the legend, Cinda, but he is chilling in here answering any uh, questions we have. <laughs> so thanks for that, Cinda. Uh, so EU then are top three. I think EU's, I mean, not EU, sorry. Bree, I think is how you pronounce it. Sorry. <laughs> or Bree or Bry. I think it's Bry. Bry. Okay. Bry is doing a very good job at the moment, I think, uh, in terms of backing uh, some reds and greens. There was already a shock there, which I think we're forgetting to, to mention. I believe um, it was an EU shock as well. Yeah, it seemed like an EU shock with their top four. I don't know what happened to the guy in third there. He blatantly fallen off the track, unfortunately. But uh, EU still top three at least. Fire coming up, which is very scary for this top three. Maybe taking out EU in fourth there. Uh, Theo and Flo chilling in five. Missing that fire. Getting that backspin, which is huge. Very, very good with the backspin in this race, I think. Getting a shrimp, which is great. Uh, able to dodge that roof with the horn. Uh, looking good, looking good so far. Uh, there is a blue shell and almost disaster coming up to Bry there. Uh, I was like walking the plank there for a second <laughs> on the side of that, uh, the side of that turn going to that like double apex left yeah. hand item box. And oh the no, that fire got hit for the gap. Flow. And uh, he's clipping a couple of people on the way uh, way back, but that's what I mean. I mean, you know, when you're throwing fire and when you're greens, you need to aim a little bit more to the left than where the person actually is so you can bank on them taking the cut. And it was a complete blind hit of the fire, and it basically just landed Bry right into that gap. So uh, it, just huge stuff there. But with that being said, though, EU is up by 24. Very, very strong start for EU. Obviously, EU, I think Spike was bagging since the very beginning of lap one, and he was able to get that shock early on. Obviously, it helped uh, EU very, very much in the long run. If there wasn't that fire, or um, uh, I think someone fell off at some point, I think they could have maintained top four, or the blue shell as well, I guess. Uh, but very, very good start for EU. I don't think I was expecting that. Um, so yeah, hopefully EU can keep up this momentum and hopefully maybe WF can come back with this bagging track if it gets picked in the end. Yeah, the thing that really hurt WF there was the bottom three and then also two, seven, eight for the other remaining spots. But I think what's really interesting now is it's going to see, yeah, if EU can kind of keep up that pressure. They were almost kind of going back to the same sequence of what they started last war, going with RWS immediately second if I'm not mistaken, or at least early on in the war. But we are going to be heading to the lottery pick track, the dry, dry desert here for race number two. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll see a lot of uh, baggers starting up here at this first set. EU opting to run in top two, uh, maybe just to get coins at least. Um, yeah, I guess they're top three now. It's interesting that three of them are running this track at the moment. Uh, a lot of baggers from both teams going back there. Someone just really really bagging back there just stopping in the star uh but i think that's just they can have someone in at least bottom three in order to get the shock because i think shock is only available in uh the bottom four spots so i think it's good to have at least two of your teammates in spots probability of pulling the shock at some point um so yeah br br sorry ugh, i can't pronounce it is it it's, it's bry, bry right 
Yeah, okay. like 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 uh, like Bride Codia, like Bride WH. Um, there's lots of brides. Yeah, in yeah. Competitive I'm Mario Kart, actually. <laughs> yeah, I should have done that by now. Oh, it seems. What like... is this? I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think he just kind of got caught off guard by the puppy or something with his line. He just had to adjust it. Um, but there already is a shot coming in. Uh, I'm not sure he used it, but Spike That's gonna at least dodged him last. I think it was Spike. EU. You can see Leo uh, using the dodge, and then another Waluigi player back there that could be Mancer. You don't know. But, oh, item screen there for Bry. That's That might have been his own man, that item screen. Or that could have been Linko, so I wasn't paying too much attention. But still a whole lap to go, so that doesn't really... There is a blue much. shell, and I think the guy in first, it was EU. He didn't have any items in first, so I think he might be getting hit by that unless there is a, a horn or something. If I was Bry, I would have stopped there for two boxes, uh, but I guess he can do something with these three shrooms up here. Hopefully getting a decent item at this double set, assuming he gets it. He does get it, Linkos lagging through it. Getting a star in triple shrooms is huge there. He's going to be able to get at least, hopefully, a top three or four position with these items, potentially. Uh, a second shot coming in. Dodging Bry at least. I wasn't sure if that was WF or EU. I think he got lucky there. I, I think that was a WF yeah. shot. I think it was maybe. as well. Uh, that red having contact is not not good. But Spike getting second, I think. And then decent spots. WF with 1, 3, 4, 7, 8, and 11. That is the race they needed from that bagging track. So that they're is already be, back in it. Yeah, plus 12 uh, for WF. So they're, yeah, they're only down by 12, but that's very nominal at this point especially only two races in so sketch it looks like we have ourselves a game and what a what a better way to watch it than having a front row seat to see who who your opponent is i know right that's crazy because yeah i guess this match definitely decides uh who prestige will go against which i'm i personally won't be playing in that time but uh we do have a good six person lineup who will be playing in that so that'll be fun to watch as a spectator for sure <laughs> Any reason in particular why why you're not playing specifically, or? Uh, so I think we want to use our best six in this lineup, and so I don't think I consider myself part of the best six just because everyone in that team is like super super good. Uh, but the six we chose, I think, I guess I can talk about it really quickly, is Ryan's Despair, Julian, Sebast, Dragon, and Birdo. And I think at the moment that's just like such a good lineup in terms of what we have and in terms of chemistry and just raw skill. And so I think just going into finals, we want to have our best foot going forward. Uh, so yeah, I think we just ended up coming to the conclusion that those six would be the best uh, in terms of what availability everybody had for that day. So Yeah, wow, just kind of laying it all out there. So now everybody knows what to look forward to for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah you got to be pretty confident. Just, you know, and, and yeah, it's funny because like, you know, I have a, we have a 30-player roster and it's like, hey, who's available? And you'd be surprised. I mean, some players are out doing a tournament in New York or doing a tournament in Vegas or things are happening. And I mean, I remember we had a, a match up against NBA in the losers and we literally only had six people free and we were like, got to make this work. But it's, it's, inter it's interesting how it all kind of plays out, but that's good that, that you guys are obviously prepared, especially too with the, with the title on the line. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Anyways, <laughs> I kind of did this. A race lot of about. movement here though. There's just a lot of, <laughs> movement i'm kind of hope, waiting for it to spread out, out a little bit before <laughs> things yeah, settle down yeah. uh pack is very very close spike opting not to back for shock this race i think it's one of the first races he doesn't <laughs> actively go back for the shock for uh but there is a roy back there in last i'm pretty sure all the roys i think are eu no just kidding sorry i was completely wrong actually but i'm not sure who the guy in last is at the moment with that roy uh, however, EU having decent front presence up there. Um, it seems like that Roy is not losing anything, if I am seeing that right. Which could be an indicator of either a blue shell or a shock. Blue shell here with, with Bry, and yeah, the there are a series of Roys. We know that one is Leo, and Leo tends to be either at the front or the back of the pack from just what we've seen in the last race. Manster there is in ninth, so we, we okay, might so see a surge come up here from EU. Yeah, 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 for sure. Ah, oh, this lap three. Oh. Sorry, really I think I was spring. behind a bit on the stream. Well, there, well, there's three. I mean, that Roy is so far back. You gotta wonder if maybe that's a DC. Or yeah, something. it could be a DC, but I haven't seen him use a star or a bell. 
And usually bots use their items as soon as yeah, they get they them, Yeah, they use them I very guess. quickly. So, I am not sure what's happening. Because if it is EU, that means they held the shock for the top spots, I can only assume. Uh, but it didn't really work out if they did have a shock. Yeah. Uh, Spice so that was first. Leo. So, Theo, Troida, and there is one other Roy there. So, so Leo, yeah, he does tend to play the back. And it obviously was compelled to to hold whatever he had there. And just kind of unfortunate there for, for Bri. I mean, it was a plus 14 race. WF is actually now up by two, 124 to 122. And, you know, just that little hit of the banana at the end, it allows that, that extra set of points to go to WF winning now because of the fact that Bri hit the banana and that player was able to get around him for 10th. Yeah, for that's sure. not obviously that's not like you know that's just what you could could attribute it to. Obviously, there's it's a six person race or, or on a on a team, so it's a twelve person race, six players on a team. But just little things like that could literally shift the the whole dynamic of of the race. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, EU dodging that drafting track that WF is trying to get with uh, Dolphin Shoals. We might see a few uh, Strudels because <laughs> they might have switched because Yoshi Valley isn't necessarily the best. Like running they track. Have, so yeah, they, they are a lot of. Which what's I, really, I really weird is, even in some of the wars that I've been in recently, whenever it doesn't go DS, it always goes RYV, and it happened twice in a row. It happened in the last war between EU and RE, <laughs> and so you're just seeing a lot of a lot of streetles here, but it, it's just really interesting. It's just something I've noticed. I've seen this literally four or five times in the last. I'm I'm not even joking. Like the last two weeks. It's conspiracy, man. <laughs> That being said, though, Spike goes out to the lead. He's there with uh, Louise and Manfred. Yeah. There. This is a top like Spike, four, at least. Spike is given complete like 180 in terms of his contribution to the team, whereas last tour he was like bagging, I think, literally every track for Shock and Blue to completely being in the front most of the races on uh, this war. So that's interesting to see. Being top four isn't necessarily the best thing. He's going to get that green on him pretty easily from Lampy, uh, but Shock is obviously very, very, very strong in this track going for it is usually a sensible thing to do i mean with these four up here you gotta wonder where leo is because leo has been playing the front and the back so when spike wasn't bagging so we do see go. a shock there and the go. blue shell that is definitely wf getting that blue and shock which is going to be completely detrimental to their strategy which is why it's so dangerous having and the link -offs coming up and the ghost in first having a shroom in first i think that's going to be swift coming up and the roy uh, Scooty there with Shrooms. Another shock! Double shock. Coming and up. I think, I think what happened there was that might have been an EU shock. If yeah. I'm mistaken because what happened was is I did see, I think it might have been Leo there in the back dodging up. So immediately I th thought to myself, that might have been an EU shock. Clearly it wasn't. But because of the fact that he dodged, having that shock secondary more than likely is what allowed that Waluigi player to move up through the dodge. That probably would have been Manster. Or, or actually, it, might have, it must have been the, the fifth player, uh, if I'm mistaken. No, it could have been Master. He's behind. It's going to so. be so close. I don't know what's happening right now. This could go either way for either team. EU, definitely. Well, it's coming up. More of the bottom spots. Spike getting completely clapped in the pack there, out of first place. I think this is going to be a huge... I think it's going to be a good WF race. But I do see a few WF back here, so I'm actually completely unsure which way this is going to go for both teams. I think this is going to be a very narrow margin. That You were correct. Uh, I think it's slightly a win for WF, but it's still a very close race, all things considered. I think it was actually a slight win. It was plus four for EU. So EU? Okay, talk, sorry, my bad. <laughs> talk about that. Oh, wait, wait, we might we might uh, be be changing things up here a little bit. No, it was um, a win for WF. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a win for WF. You were correct. And uh, we're getting our scores updated now as we speak. So it is going to be now a tie in wow. this one. So it is actually a it is it is a plus two win. Okay, no, take three, take three. Here we go. We'll have to figure out what it is, but it is very narrow. Let's just put it that way. Yes, it is very narrow for sure. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties with the score at the moment, but we will get those to you as soon as you see them. Oh, I think. Yeah, okay, so that was a plus four race for WF, and now WF is up by six points overall. As we go into Piranha Plant Slide, which is a very, very good track for 
being in first place, which I think was EU, right? Or was it WF? Yeah, it was EU. It was EU, EU yeah. had one, and I want to say four. Yeah, one, four, six, eight, eleven, twelve. So, yep. That was a really solid there on WF's part, even though despite not winning the race, uh, on, by position at least, they, they cumulatively did end up getting the win by four points. So, again, really, really tight pack here, making for some exciting action to call. And we're just seeing a really interesting rotation of players back and forth. I think we're seeing like Theo back, we're seeing potentially Leo back. Uh, there are a couple other Roys, so I don't like to just profile on the, on the ones that I know, but traditionally, that's kind of what we've been seeing, and we're already seeing a top four here yet again for EU. Top five even with Louise back there. Yeah, this is definitely a good track to uh, get up in the front. Um, and once you get in the front, it's pretty easy to break away, obviously. Uh, I don't think WF has much of an opportunity to get their top spots out right now. Um, Luckily, he had a shroom there to recover from that driving mistake. Having a boomerang is really good since he's in third and he can get some damage done with that, as we see right now. Um, yeah, not much that WF can do at the moment unless they get triple reds or a blue shell back there or a shock. Theo trying to avoid that boomerang at all costs, considering he's like their only top position at the moment. Um, if it was me, I would have held on to that shroom, I think, for the shortcut. Um, now he can't take it, obviously. He can maybe do some damage with these bananas if they come up in the shroom. But now they have a good opportunity with these green shells to put forward and maybe snipe them to top two, perhaps. But uh, as we see from both teams, I think they have two people really, really far in, the, far in the back. That bomb just completely destroying Theo there and any chance he had at getting anything done in the top two. So I think EU is just dominating this race. They are, yeah. We're seeing a, a little bit of movement back with some with some items and stars and bullets but i'm not sure if we're going to see anything in time here for uh this opening but got to hold our breath i guess oh that bomb was scary <laughs> uh, he, he was backing a lot of stuff being in like top four i guess but i guess he wanted to get the shroom there um that was interesting late shot they're... coming in there towards the end but looks like spike let up there at the line to give Bry second place. What a great race for EU. Top four, seventh, last. Manster taking one for the team, I suppose, with the maybe holding Shock or Blue. Yeah, there was a late Shock there at the end. That is going to be a minus 20. So he goes back in the lead. They're up 18, and we're just kind of seeing relative deadlock here, just back and forth. But if EU can kind of continue this, this front running, you know, last race or last war, we saw them kind of more leveraging shocks and manipulating their positions with mid pack and in the back. But now oh, it's it's just clearly front running. It's, it just shows the versatility of this team and how they can kind of react against whoever they're facing. And, and it's really impressive to see right now. Obviously, WF still very much in this, and you know, being the D one champs of MKU, they they for sure know know the position that they're in. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's something to be said for that as they seem to be doing or seem to be good at playing under pressure, which I think gets to a lot of teams is like when it's a really big match, the pressure gets to them and that affects their gameplay. Whereas I think seasoned players, it doesn't really affect them as much. And I think WF have been in situations like this before where they're down a bit in high pressure matches and they're able to, you know, be cool, calm and collected and uh, still try their best. Yeah, because really it's, it's just so close mathematically that and then we're not even halfway done yet that's what's even crazier but it looks like wf though does have at least two and three and it does look like eu might be holding on to that top spot there just from from getting off oh i know it is going to be a top three there for wf with spike now moving there into fourth yeah but it is tm and as tm goes <laughs> doesn't really matter what your spots are too much because uh that one item can completely change the race, and that item being the uh, Thunderbolt. That is true, and it is going to come down to this last like set of turns, taking the cut, hoping you have that item there at the last second, and you know, just just driving. Yeah. To be fair, it's been like I feel like the shock has been pulled quite consistently for both wars, because generally it's the case like shock isn't even pulled in general, but I feel like it's been quite consistent uh, throughout the two wars, it being obtained at some point in the race 
Yeah, that was a great chain there by Bride. Ends up getting a bullet in the three shrooms. Flo is there behind him, and then it looks like that might be oh. you, Roy, or potentially there in the back. I think that was a good bill uses, actually, because he will be dropped before the next item set, which is fair enough, and he's able to avoid that green and get some coins, which is good. Always good. Uh, you see the guy in last, I'm not sure if he has yeah, he's in the bill. Swift getting that red shell on Bry, but not able to take the cut with, with not having a shroom. Oh, this is Bry pretty much catch-up mode right now. Very good items for Bry. Uh, getting a plant there with WF around him is not too bad. And then the star is going to hopefully help out up here, especially if there's... Oh, he, sh uh, he was a bit slow. Obviously, that was a WF shock with Swift dodging up and Lamphy, I think. And then there's a blue shell as well on the line for the guy in but first. But he does get four shrooms, though. So talk about a recovery. He does end up getting the win. Oh, wow. no. Photo finish at the line. Who took it? It might have been W there or another EU player there on the side. EU yeah, top two. Though. Regardless yeah. of that shock, EU's able to confirm top two, which is crazy. And that is a plus 16 win there for EU. So really exciting stuff to see coming out of out of them right now just kind of riding that momentum is really what they're doing you know and and it's just really impressive to watch how they're they're still maintaining their their collectiveness in this also i don't know if you noticed this but the past couple of like big matches for wf uh, i think one of their key players mars hasn't played in either of them and uh I historically i think mars is usually one of the people who kind of like leads the call if i am correct and he usually yes. provides more back presence and like calls a lot of the shocks. So I'm wondering if uh, any of like the results going on recently have anything to do with him not being in the lineup, able to like call shocks or have any back presence to get shocks and everything. Because I feel like that might negatively impact them more than they think. Um, if that makes sense. No, but... it's for sure huge. I mean, that's it's interesting when you're talking about everyone kind of has a role, and it could be front running, it could be you know going back bagging it could be just being a bruiser in the mid pack and just kind of really just making yourself more of an item warlord i don't know you can make up whatever names for, for you want but especially too having that call leader is just such a huge thing because it's kind of like in crew uh i i had to do crew i don't know why when i was younger or, or actually no not when i was younger like a couple years ago for a work thing long story short if someone's messing up your boat won't go anywhere and having that that coxswain essentially that's telling you what to do that that call leader is is so valuable, and um, you know especially sure. too with like with my team I was like well I kind of ran I can kind of bag I don't know what I'm gonna do here behind you know a dark ear and ember now, uh, so that's kind of what like I personally figured out doing is, is becoming like a call leader and playing trying to play the back, and so that is huge if WF is missing him I do recall in the the match in the in the winners finals Mars was absent as well too. Yeah, he was. And I, I would think that might have attributed to some of the results there, uh, because at least from what we know, this from Prestige Ward WF in the uh, winners finals is that W like pretty much everyone in that lineup wasn't willing to go for the shock, and so when you're not if you don't have anyone like willing to be back there going for blues or shocks, it can be just be so detrimental to the end result for sure. And I think Mars kind of gave them more of that kind of leverage, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's like you know you're you're missing that one player. Obviously, you don't want to be dependent on that one player. You know, th these were literally you know conversations that I know plenty of teams have had, and you know I mean they're still holding their own. Obviously, goes to show you you know someone in this group of six has to be the one stepping up, oh. keeping, keeping them in this fight, and lots of movement going on here. No, I spot. think Flo. I think that back from Flo ends up hitting Swift, which is uh, knowing them, they usually get kind of angry over that kind of stuff. So. Hopefully that doesn't affect them too much going going forward. But EU maintaining two three four, which is uh, a great setup going into this last lap, uh, especially if EU can pull some sort of like blue shell or something to get get them out of first. But I think Spike is going to go for the chain reds, able to red flow out of first, which is super good for EU. Now they're set up so well. There's a blue shell. If they communicate well, he can dodge it. I think it's going to go. Oh, yeah, sketchy. Oh, <laughs> it's oh, cool. I, I gotta... It's cool. But I mean. It's going to end up with Bry taking the win here. And yeah, but that was pretty crazy. I mean, let's just talk about that for a second. So the fact that EU was able to move in 1-2 with two reds 
Uh, it really gave them a lot of great positions there. But look at that. Two through five WF. That is a narrow plus two win for them. So great recovery, especially too with the miscue there between uh, uh, Flo and I believe that might have been uh, Swift. So still a, still a good race. Um, you know, Obviously, Toad Hart being one that EU or loves to capitalize on. But yeah, I mean, that was crazy. And then you did end up seeing, I think it was Spike take the hit on that blue shell. And basically, that was Bry just picking up where Spike left off. All right, so I have refresh. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I was I was on the um, other stream or whatever. Sorry, I was watching um, whoever we're watching now on Twitch. But I'm on the uh, Discord stream, so hopefully there's no delay or anything. So it should be good to go. But yeah, that was a crazy race for sure. Set up so well going into the last lap, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, and I think Spike is doing DC well with this. Yeah, I think he's been DCing a couple of times. He DC'd last race, I think, too. Yeah, that's why. I mean, he's either been in the front or in the back. He, he was bagging a little bit, I think, then he was in the front. But he has DC'd. So I, whenever I see a Roy in the back, I just assume it's him. But hey, finally, we did end up getting Dolphin Shoals. So hopefully, you know, players did switch to some Streetles as they're going into this one. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, WF minus 32. Uh, right now, so EU does have uh, nearly a full race lead on on the, the D1 champs. But again, we still have a whole, uh, I believe, five races to go. So again, any anyone's still in it. It's just a matter of getting some clutch races. And it's really all about communication. Yeah, for sure. Communication is so huge in these kind of wars too. Because uh, I think the biggest weakness for my team when we made it uh, Prestige is that we had lots of good like individual players, but we just like never played together. And so having that sort of like communication and team chemistry is more important than I think we expected. But obviously, we've built that more like now since we've been a thing for a few months. But uh, I think most teams don't realize how important uh, communication is. Yeah, no, that's really true. I mean, our, our dynamic just to add on an additional layer to that, we're, we're gunning for each other every Saturday night, and we're rivals, and we gotta forget all that and, and play as a team the following morning. With maybe you know seven or eight hours of sleep, so that's uh, that's definitely a little bit yeah. of a challenge for us. But uh, it, it does end up you know paying dividends. I mean, this just the general improvement that you know you can achieve from that better communication it goes a long way. Blue Shell connects there with Bry and Swift there behind him in tenth, trying to to see exactly what he has to to avoid any potential pitfalls here going to lap number three and. Got hit by nothing, so that must mean that, like a player might have been in a boo there. No, I think it was a green shell, but I guess it might have been the boo, yeah. I'm not sure why he's not stopping for two boxes, though. That might have been play, because he can potentially get a shock uh, in that position, seeing as he's far behind there. Uh, I'm unsure of who was in top spots, because I honestly wasn't paying that much attention to the top, uh, top six or five players there. Uh, he, he I didn't seem to be lagging a bit. Maybe no. But they're and not looking Leo, like a great race for EU. Well, they're bottom two at least. Leo just kind of trailed back. And maybe it was because he, he had something or he was waiting. That is going to be a, a decent win there for WF, getting one, two, and then I, I believe some of those mid pack spots as well. So that's going to be a plus 16 race for WF. And now it is a minus 16. They basically just cut their, their lead or their, their deficit, I should say. That's the word. In half. So now it's a 16-point win here. Or lead, I guess you could say, for Euphoria. Yep. You are indeed correct. And they just need a, at least one more race like that to pretty much tie the war up. So still, still a very, very close match. Which I wasn't expecting it to be... Uh, super close to be honest i was expecting it to go like one way or the other uh by more of a margin but obviously it makes this kind of commentary and the war just in general more interesting for sure when you have a close match like this it really does and, and eu has been been doing an incredible job making themselves known especially in this tournament just with with the way that they've played and the way that they've come up through the even the group stage as well so really taking advantage of this opportunity but again you know the the mountain doesn't end here you reach the summit 
once you <laughs> face face you guys, Presti's there <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. So obviously these guys will have a lot to think about. I mean, it's interesting too. Is it's just the what it, what it gets me here. We're heading in RWS. It, for these guys, it's eight to nine p.m. where they're playing. Going on ten o'clock at night, I believe for for Spain for sure. Uh, Spain and France, yeah. Same thing in France, yeah. They're in that eight to nine p.m. range, and but man, they're playing at night, and and I'll tell you what, I'd rather play at night than them waking up and setting an alarm first thing oh, in yeah. the morning, especially for West Coast. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that that early FFA. Oh, that was six a.m. for I California, would, right? Yeah, I would recommend you all do it, but that is a that is a no for me. For that, <laughs> I'm out. Uh, but it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I know there's a lot of players looking for teams there, but again, very close start here to RWS. Uh, I mean, yeah, this yeah. This is how RWS. So this is how RWS like always goes in the beginning. It's like if you get good bumps, like you can kind of get into the front. But if you get bumped just like any bad way, like this, as we can see now, it kind of just ends you a bit. But it's good if you can get in the front after the first few turns for sure. Yeah, you gotta give some props to Bry there. I mean, he did get bumped a little bit going into that left-hander, but managed to recover to stay in that six-seven position. Now all the way up to third. He's got to watch out. Um, Maybe Luiso can do some damage with that green show. He's able to snipe him. Some yeah, yeah. Good. That's why I was. That's why I stopped because you saw that Bry backed off because he was gonna gonna attempt to throw it, and it was very well done. And that's what I mean. Like Leo Luiso, uh, they are like the bruisers of. of oh, there their is team. a blue shell. Hopefully, he doesn't get any contact behind him. He's able to go wide at least to secure top two for Spike and Bry there. Unfortunately, that shroom gets taken, so he's not able to take the cut here. Um, oh, he's kind of. Oh, he, he does get hit. You know what I actually call that? There. Uh, What's that? And, and it's weird. Like I'll actually like kamikaze myself in situations. Top runners won't get hit. I, I just consider them the secret service member of the team because they're the ones taking the bullet <laughs> for their fellow <laughs> compatriots. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, very well done there. And then yeah, look at that. It kind of allowed uh, that run to continue. But again, nine, ten, eleven here for EU. A little bit concerning right now with the star coming up from behind. That's gonna. Maybe be Linkos or and a bomb. Maybe Troida. Even like three people. I think mostly EU got hit there. Yeah, and WF getting hit there. That's going to be uh, one player. Flow still going strong. We do see the the cut coming in, and it, oh man, I think Bride's got to watch out for that red shell behind him. But he's somehow man fourth in that, which is a very impressive run. But WF top three, followed by a four, five, six from EU, and a bottom two for WF. So. That is going to be a plus 10 win. Still solid win there for WF. And again, that's just cutting into the EU lead. And <laughs> six points here now of, of a gap now between EU. Yeah, it's so yeah. close, dude. So close. There's only three races to go. This is super hype. But uh, that was a very back and forth race, I think, uh, on Mario Stadium. Because we saw EU being like top three going into like lap two or three, I think. And then it just completely took a turn because uh, of that blue shell, and then obviously getting that shroom stolen and uh, Bry failing in first and missing. The line yeah, I'll, there I'll be honest. Sure. I've been my phone's been lighting up with uh, just people from you know East Coast, whatever, just saying happy birthday. And little did I know, we saw that yeah, EU basically top spots, and then you're finishing your sentence sketch. I go up to the screen, and it's basically like a 9, 10, 11 EU. And I was like, what just happened? <laughs> again, just under pressure, just really, you know, doing a good thing here. Zoro's come in. Is that a sub for Euphoria? Uh, I think it is. Oh, it must be because do you see earlier on? Yeah. I, we'll have to double check and see who he subbed for. But yeah, he wasn't in the start 12 when we did have the the graphic up we're going to be heading here into rmc retro mario circuit and again it's probably like a uh an 10 split or actually it's seven and five with five back seven up front so we'll have to see how this item manipulation is going to play out yeah for sure uh this is obviously a good track for that seeing as they're only down six it's um not going to be too hard, I think, to catch back up, but I think the sub might be pretty detrimental for EU, especially if they lost Leo, because I think Leo's considered better players for sure, or more active players. Uh, but at the moment, just in terms of what's going on in the race, we see Spike in first as the Metal Mario. Uh, I'm sure who's in 2 3 4. I think it's WF. Uh, Spike already out of the first, but the pack is so spread out at the moment. 
Really solid hit there onto Bry. And yeah, I mean, you kind of have to wonder with this being so narrow and WF not only playing well, but you got to wonder how much the, the DCs have really negatively impacted EU here. So probably was a smart move to at least get Zoro in there. But you don't know, again, when you're making a mid-race change, it really, you know, affects the, the dynamic of things, especially too with, um, you know, just, just the overall level and the cadence of the call. But here we see the bullet coming in here from Bry. I think EU is making a run here for the win. It's going to be close there with WF. You see Spike moving into third. And Bry here avoiding those bananas. Does end up finishing roughly eighth. Seventh there because of that boost panel. And WF ends up taking uh, the top spot. Top so that was two, slow. four, six, ten, eleven. That is going to be huge. And that's going to allow WF to take the lead here. Plus 14 win. WF is now ahead by eight points. But it's still a war. I mean, th this is this is close, and I mean, th these guys are want they want to face you guys in the finals. I mean, it it's going to be a very hard <laughs> matchup. I think either way. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was kind of upsetting. <laughs> I saw um, uh, Bry was um, what was it? He was getting hit a bit in lap two, but he just wasn't going for any of the coins, and I was like screaming my head coins. Because I feel like when you do get hit a lot, it's so important to just like get that money again to have an opportunity to catch back up. But if you only have like one or two coins going into lap three, it's super, super hard to catch up. And I feel like people just forget how important having that money is going into lap three, uh, for sure. Yeah, coins definitely play a part. And I can confirm that Zoro did sub in for Leo. So that's why you see Zoro points. Not entirely sure what Leo was at, but obviously we got the numbers crunching here. And this is going to be a big race for the likes of EU. So I'm not sure whose track pick this was, but this is going to need to be a big brain race for them to give themselves a shot to either hold on, maintain their position, or be in a good enough position to make a comeback in race number 12. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and remind me of the point deficit again. I forget what it is. So WF won 14 points in that previous race. So World Friend is up by eight points, 414 to 406 over Euphoria. Very, very close war for sure. Um, so going up into this race, Spike getting hit out of first, I think, or at least getting hit, but recovering uh, in first. Lampy getting clapped with the red, but able to avoid that with a star at least. I think it's in Bry's best interest to kind of stay in the back and maybe stop at this next set to cycle through items a bit to pull blue bill or shock or something like that. Uh, EU in bottom three, so they definitely need someone going for it at least. Able to get that double box chain, uh, pulling just four shrooms, which is kind of unlucky. And I think that's kind of due to the lag there, because maybe the mini map didn't register that far behind, unfortunately. So you see EU in 7, 8, 9, 10. Luis Sao just again, just just being a bruiser. Lanfi's trying to make a move, but as they made that move up, I kind of think of this as cluster management. Again, this is just a random word I'm making up. <laughs> but, the, but what happened was, is they moved a little bit midway through lap number two. It allowed WF to have the bottom three spots there, get some power items. So that's a, that's the one thing that just concerns me, but obviously you do need to make your move at the end of lap two from the back. So just kind of the way that it shook out just makes me a little bit nervous for EU. But again, the, just Zoro and the, these guys are just bruising their way up. Now Bry all the way up to fourth. So they're doing a good job, and all the EU players are following behind. Yeah, this is looking like a pretty decent race for EU altogether. Uh, I think they're able to get 2-4 at least, 2-4-5. Uh, no, 2-4-6-7, bottom two. So it's still a winning race for W. It's going to increase that lead. Um... WF would have had a better race, I think, if Swift didn't get back spammed there before the glider. But I think he was able to recover at least a bit in the end. But uh, yeah, EU's definitely going to need solid. better races. Yeah, WF, again, plus eight. Um, I was just thinking, too, that if WF had three guys there in the back and their probability shot up of a shock, that could have even been a, a bigger nail in the coffin for them. But nonetheless, though, I mean, to reverse this around from the, the, the heavy pressure that EU's been putting on. Now having, you know, plus 16. I mean, they're not out of the woods yet by any means, but you got to feel at least a little bit better rather than holding your breath going yeah. to this next one. But EU, 
I mean, this is this is the last stand right here. I'm kind of curious. And it is going to be Mount Wario that does get picked. Yeah, plus 16 is definitely still, like, at... it's it's, like, probably probability-wise, like, 70, I guess, or 60, 40, something like that. Uh, but I don't know the actual, I don't have like some magical mathematical model deciding that it's very arbitrary, but like, I'm just trying to say it's still definitely either way it, it could go. I'm going to say that it's, uh, it's 65% world friend right now, 35%, um, EU just based off of my rough math and analytical skills. <laughs> I am an analytic major, so let's go with that. Um, yeah, I was there you playing go. a little sports betting this morning. It did not go my way, but <laughs> that's that's literally what they do in stats. They'll they'll show you as the course of the match is going the percentage. But right now, here we're already getting heavy hits going on. Bry, we're seeing some EU members kind of fighting there for the top. We see a 10-11 WF, and again, it really kind of comes down to like you mentioned this this item box that could potentially work out to Bry's favor because those leaders yeah. are going to hit those boost panels. It's going to increase the distance. I feel like shock here is like it, it definitely is usually pulled like quite often right here, but unfortunately, I think he's too close to get it. Um, so he still gets triple shroom star, which is okay. I think uh, he can definitely catch up here because this tree section is kind of deadly back, and so if you're in the back, you're able to take advantage of people kind of like messing up there, getting hit, and catch up. Uh, I don't know if I would have used that shroom there personally, but I'm glad he didn't use the star there to make the chain. Uh, but I saw WF back there as well, so I think EU has some sort of top spots. I'm not sure who's up there above 5th other than Bry, but I think if he's able to hold on to the star, it should be good uh, insurance just in case he gets hit. Unfortunately, gets the trail there from down the bank, getting hit or hitting the wall. So, uh, Bry obviously trying to chain his items before the double, but with that being said, just kind of got knocked. But this could actually give it the pack is so close and the shock coming oh, in. Oh, shock from this EU. This, this could be. Shock. This could be enough to get them into the top spots to get plus 16. Lanthi coming up in the star. Getting They're getting He's here. able to recover from a shroom. The shrooms get booed. That's oh. horrendous for EU. Oh, I think this is going to be a WF win. Oh, That's and a bottom three, three for EU. And wow. Not EU enough. Let's talk about a, a 1 3 4. I don't know. It's going to be. Wait. Plus 18? Oh, right, right, for WF. Okay, hold, man. <laughs> so they won by two. That was it was very narrow, and WF played that situation that could have been borderline catastrophic so well. And especially, too, you just got to feel bad for Bry. I, I mean, y you saw what happened to him. Just, that's unfortunate. That's Mario Kart for you. Man, that was a crazy ending. I thought with that shock, the chance of... EU coming back, but getting redded at the at the line there with the shrooms and the shrooms getting stolen just kind of pinned the nail in the coffin, I think, <laughs> a bit, so to speak. Yeah, that was an incredible finish. I literally came down to the final turn, uh, it, when you think about it, and and really just kind of great item play there by WF, kind of in that that upper to mid pack, just isolating some of those those EU players from, from potentially getting you know a top three, top four situation. Um, that that could have gone very south very quick, but it just shows you, you know, how skilled Euphoria was to kind of think about that shock usage, getting their players into dodges, and then also even more impressive on the world friend side, not cracking when they saw that happen. Basically, in the final 20 seconds of the race, they just consistently worked, got to that item box prior to the end, and and just let things sort themselves out. For sure. Well, congrats to uh, World Friend for up a good fight and then coming back after being down 24 uh race one definitely didn't give up uh eu's dcs were kind of unfortunate and having the sub come in was also kind of unfortunate for eu but nonetheless made a close war and always makes it more fun for sure uh but i guess we will be seeing a prestige grand finals tomorrow so it's going to be the rubber match that a lot of people are looking forward to for sure. So again, unfortunate for EU, they are going to finish third place overall. Requiem as well that we saw earlier, they're going to be finishing fourth. But I mean, talk about some amazing finishes to the end of this tournament. And hopefully, even uh, even tomorrow, it's going to be just as cinematic as as what we saw today. For sure. Anyways, with that being said, I think that's about it. I don't think we're going to be getting any interviews today or anything. 
Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, realistically, you know, it was just the two matches today. And then tomorrow at, well, 12 p.m. Pacific, I believe it's 3 p.m. Eastern. That is going to be, I'm looking at the, the Amplify MK website, so I apologize if that's correct or, or not. But that's when you can expect to, to see us in action, see Prestige versus WF. Yep. Cool. Anyways. Well, I guess yeah, with that, that being said, said, you know, oh, what, yeah, what a weekend. What a, now, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll call it there. So, so for night and sketch and also Cinda yep. uh, who, who took over the reins of uh, unfortunately some technical issues here on my end, we will call it and we will see you back here for the winner's finals of Amplify 5 tomorrow. Yep. See you later, guys.